Hi, if you're watching this video, this is going to be an introduction to a small clip that I've taken from another case study that I did on this same truck. So if you want to watch the full thing, you can check that out. But I think it's important. I shouldn't say important. To me, my personal experience, this PIP on the, so backing up, 1988 F350 with the 460 gas in it. I think it's a 7.5 liter or something like that. And we had ignition issues on it. And this is the one where it's got the ignition control module and the computer that send a signal back and forth. And they're called the PIP and the SPOW, the profile ignition pickup and the spark output. And the control strategy for the PIP versus spout to me in past was always a little confusing. I have a lot of notes on this from a past life and I've watched other people discuss this, but this one getting in firsthand, I think I have a way to show the data and the shift in control from the ignition coil to the engine module actually picking up timing. And so I'm just going to clip that little section and throw it behind this so you can have a, a short summary of what the PIP and spout do. Just to recall, because I don't remember what I filmed last time, you're looking at four channels here. Channel A is PIP, that is from ignition control module to engine computer. Channel B is spout, that is uh, engine computer to ignition control module. Channel C is ignition coil primary current. Channel D is secondary ignition clamp around the coil wire that goes from the ignition coil to the, dis the center of the distributor cap. So you have all eight firing events in this one capture. Hope this video is helpful for someone else out there who's trying to find a shorter version and uh, have fun with it. Okay, let's data review for the nerds because uh, I'm excited on this one. I think it's super cool. We have PIP, spout, primary current, secondary ignition coil to ig uh, distributor cap wire so every single caption all cylinder firings in here and then we started with a key on oops that was far so we got our key off key on for a second or a couple whatever and then you know crank fire and idle and what i'm looking for in here is the shift between the pip and the spout and also it's pretty cool you can see when the car started running or the engine started running on its own down here on our let's see if i can work around this camera down here on our coil ramps <clears throat> you can see the coil saturates by the flat tops and so as the engine starts to spin faster the time that it takes to or the time that is powering the coil shortens and we can see here we actually start to get you know points as opposed to flat tops because the engine speed is increasing and if I zoom out further, anyway, you can kind of see, see the difference as I was getting at. But what we, or what I'm really interested in is the shift between the pip and the spout. What we can see here is, let me get this dude out of the way. I'm just gonna use the cursors for the purpose of alignment. This is cranking. And we can see anytime we have a transition from low to high on the pip slash spout, because they're the same, we release the coil and we fire the spark. Let me zoom, zoom in on spark a little bit down here. And that is consistent throughout. So every time we have a low to high transition, we get a fire. Low to high, we get a fire. But right here, look at this one right it looks like this is the transition right here the low to high transition on pip and spout are the same and the release is the same but the next one the spout is early and so we can see that little gap in the pip that that's super cool we also see i think these are referred to as clippings and so we can see there's a little weird shoulder on the leading edge of the spout line. And if I recall correctly, I don't know what, I don't know if this is a, a byproduct of the electronics just happening or if there's some sort of control in here so you can actually identify, like on purpose, if you're scoping this, if you can identify the time and difference between PIP and spout. Uh, what I mean by that is if I zoom in on on this area a bit <clears throat> the 
the the early transition of spout is there. Let me grab cursor number two, and we've got that little clipping in the beginning, but that clipping, that full little low spot, finishes rising the same time that the pip is getting a signal. And so this is our time indifference, and we can see, this is cool. Uh, I think it's cool because I'm a nerd. And we can see the distance changing between the early rise of the spout and the rise of the pip. And also we can see when, because we know, you know, the spout starting to shift because the computer's controlling time. And now we can see the difference in that on, on the pip as well. So we have a little bit of a, a uh, what did I call this earlier? Um, a clipping. So like a corner clip here and that aligns with, oops, come on. What am I doing? Why stop? Well, my mouse, we broke the scope. I can't grab my cursors anymore. Let's try that again. The scope's glitchy, I tell you, but it works. So there we go. We can see the clippings are a little bit different now. Or excuse me, the clippings on the backside will line up with the drop in the, on the backside of the pip will line up with the spout. I think this is super cool. This is, uh, I did save this one waveform. I even uploaded it. I don't know if anybody will ever use it on this you know, 35 year old truck or whatever. But this is something I had learned about previously and I was unclear on the difference in the clippings. Like it never made sense to me until I look at it now. And so now it's really, really helpful to see the actual shift in time here. So they're lined up and then we can see the spout lines early. We get a clip in the pip ends later and we get a clip in and they line up like so. Uh, I think that was all I was really going to talk about on this one. I don't remember. Oh, no, 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 no. I lied to you. I want to now do this. Uh, actually, we're going to do one more thing. Again, we're we're doing nerd stuff here. So if you don't like it, I'm, I say, say skip it. Let's do this. Let's do, this is an eight cylinder. I think it's an eight cylinder. I'm <laughs> pretty sure it's an eight cylinder. Moving back, we got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spark plugs. <laughs> I don't think they made a V10 back then, but uh, we'll just be safe. We're actually going to see what the time indifference is when it starts to take over control. And the way we're going to do this is let's assume right here. So a spark plug fires. We don't really know what cylinder it is. We don't care, but we got that. We'll just, we'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one again. So let's zoom out a little bit here. <clears throat> and I, what I'm going to do is I'm actually, because the pip does not change, I'm going to go on the rising edge of the pip here. So our, our rising edge of red and our rising edge of red. Okay. Oh, I'm hitting the camera. This is really hard to do. And I grabbed the wrong cursor, so that's funny. Um, so that was... That was a waste of time. We got we to gotta grab these cursors here. We have rising edge on pip. And then I think it was one of these. I'm going to have to recount these again. We'll call this uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. I'm one off. Oh, what just happened? I bumped the screen. <laughs> what a disaster. Y'all are watching some super knuckle dragon action here. No, go away. Sort of that. All right, we got, so this is one, one fire, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Okay. So from cursor one to cursor two here, we have 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation. Now we're going to bring in our T1 and see, I'm going to see if I can zoom in just a little bit without breaking this whole thing. We're going to put our T1 cursor at the rising of the spout on the first time the engine controller takes control. And then we're going to take our T2 cursor. I'm going to move this out of the way. Our T2 cursor and put it on the rising edge of the pip. And we can see there's a delta of six degrees so on on this cylinder fire whichever cylinder is firing here we have 
zero degrees of advance from base time in. So this is, of course is going to have a base time and value. I think it's six to 10 degrees depending on the, the engine or whatever. But anyway, but when the engine takes controller, it moves it an additional six degrees for this first fire. And we're going to do that again and actually watch it advance to the next one. So we will line cursor, oops, this is cursor one. Cursor one up with the beginning of the, well, to the best of my ability, to the beginning of the spout line. Take cursor two, line it up to the beginning of the pit line. And boom, 12 degrees. So within two cylinders firing, she's advanced doubly. And I imagine, I imagine that's going to be, oh, this is cool. Okay, this is my my new guess on something. I just just picked this up. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. I'm speculating, but follow me. If you remember that cage that rotates through the Hall effect sensor and distributor has a short uh, short tab on it or a narrow tab on it. I think that's what this narrow tab here is because there's no clipping. Uh, in that, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what we got. There's no clipping. So that means that was probably the shorter tab. And you can see, if you remember in the previous traces, it looks like the shorter tab on the back side of it was actually where they cut it off because I don't know if I called it out or not, but the, the time between the two teeth is shorter before and longer after. And we can see that here. This one's just a little bit longer than that one. Anyway, let's go back to doing what we were doing. We're going to trigger... Nope, cursor one on the spout. And that was close. I want to see if they're sitting around 12 degrees or more, whatever, it's close. And then cursor two on the pip, but our, our fuel injector pulse pip. We got 12 degrees again. I'm going to do it one more time because I'm a nerd. This is T1, T2. 13 degrees. My cursors may not be perfect, about 12 degrees. I think that's super cool. I hope, I think I'm going to clip this video a little bit separate also and post it so you can have something to look. But this, this is really cool to me because I was always confused on these clippings. Again, when I've seen this in the past, I've never actually taken this specific trace before. And uh, I'm excited about it. I'm a nerd. I don't know if we necessarily really need to do cylinder one because what i wanted to see actually when i was talking previously what i wanted to see by just uh, grabbing cylinder one i was going to do the same thing but i was going to do it with the transition to uh, the spark firing or the current dropping out of the coil but we just so I, we would see also oh yeah so if you notice we already talked about it but the coil current drops because we release control at the same time that in this one the pip and spout are all lined up but now we can obviously see when it starts to shift the cool fire and obviously uh, relates to spout and so i was going to do that with cylinder one and watch that change but i got the information that i was looking for here so i don't see any need to to do that for just one single cylinder i thought this is really cool maybe y'all think or think i'm just a nerd but hey if you watched this portion of the video you're a nerd too, so na 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 boo boo. It is what it is. Um, let's put this. At this point, I don't think we have any really other base checks to do. Everything's obviously it runs. I haven't test driven it yet, so the rest of what I'm gonna do is finish a test drive, finish my pre inspection because I actually didn't do a pre inspection on this one first because it wasn't running. We toast wrapped and winched it in, and then we will. Give a customer a call, let him come pick up his vehicle. That's all I got for you in this one. Hope it was helpful. It was really helpful for me. I'm really excited to see how the Pippin spout, spout work, um, you know, firsthand. It's, it's really helpful for me to understand this. This is something I have actually a lot of notes on from previous years, but I didn't quite, quite get it. Not make sense. I'm just blabbering at this point. Hope it was helpful for somebody. I'll catch y'all in the next one.